What's going on guys? We have a brand new Nissan six speed straight from Nissan. This is the brand new six GP zero B transmission out of the brand new Z car straight from Nissan. This is 2025 technology rev match. Still have the traditional sensors on either side. We're going to go ahead and show you guys all the unknown information. People were asking like, oh, what's the input shaft diameter? Does this work with legacy adapter plates? How is the bolt pattern different? How is this transmission different than what you guys are currently using on our current swaps? We're going to go ahead and show you guys that right now getting right into it the bell housing is noticeably different uh, the bolt pattern on the lower section is completely different it does share some similarities right here on the starter dowel features with the vr38 system it's not in the same location however it does have a similar style of mounting the starter onto the bell housing we've accommodated that in some of our older uh, adapter plates where you fasten the adapter plate to the engine and then use the entire transmission mission accordingly. It does still carry your traditional dowels here on the left and right side of the bell housing. All of that today is really kind of mute. We're going to cut the bell housing off to do one of our A340 based systems for a 3UZ adapter plate, which is what we have right here. This is our A340 U1 based system for a 3UZ, 1UZ, 2UZ. They all fit onto the same pattern. Anything from 1991 to 2004 bell housing is going to share that same bolt pattern right there on the periphery. We're going to go ahead and and uh, like I said, dive right into this 6GP0B transmission that we got right here. Looking more detailed inside the bell housing, it shares that same 11 bolt pattern as before with our previous transmissions that we've messed with from Nissan. We went ahead and drained this transmission. This transmission comes with a shipping fluid or, or a fluid to prevent the uh, shafts and other stuff inside from rusting and whatnot. But we went ahead and uh, pre-drained that. We're gonna drain it again and show you guys how to install the U1 or A340 base adapter plates on here. Torque specs, fippage, how to apply all the sealant, stuff like that to do this correctly. Okay guys, we got our four and a half inch angle grinder and we're gonna start cutting the transmission. We've already kind of drained the oil out of this. There's still gonna be some residual oil that kind of comes out. This little tab right here, we're gonna cut this first. Basically hits the bell housing or the, the transmission tunnel area inside of any swap vehicles, unless it's like an actual Z or G35 or something like that. Most tunnels don't have room for that. Gonna make it a lot easier to now cut the circumvental band as well. You want the uh, angle grinder to be on this side of the, uh, the transmission because it's on this side, you can't go as deep into the cut. And in some instances, bell housing, you have these webs here. You have these webs here, here. These webs have to be cut just slightly so that you can get full penetration and uh, cut the bell housing off. So we'll go ahead and show you that here shortly. It helps to have a few of these little wood blocks to kind of prop it up and keep it safe while you're working on it. There's a couple more features on this transmission that didn't exist before. This feature here is pretty new, and this feature here is new. We're going to cut this one off if we have to. I think we do have to get that one off in order to kind of get everything off. We're going to cut this one off as well. It. We got a uh, majority of the bell housing off. What we're trying to do is make way for the uh, belt, the adapter plate to bolt on where the input shaft cover is. We of course remove all these fasteners right here. If you notice these four fasteners down here are different color. These are where the oil line is. It's just below the oil line. So these have a different, they have a thread locker on the threads going in. They all have thread locker but these have a oral resistant thread locker going into them which is why they're a different color. We're going to see how much these transmissions can hold power wise. This is obviously going to be a future video. We'll have to put one of these in our race car and then torture test it with clutch kicks and turn up the boost a lot and see how much this thing can really handle. All right so we got this bell housing cut off. We got it blown off, wiped down. It's pretty cleaned up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and 
remove the input shaft cover, measure the input shaft bearing diameter to show you guys the differences between the previous iteration and what we're currently working with now. And just for clarity, we're using a 12 millimeter snap on. And we're just gonna go ahead and take these off alternating and adjacent. These fasteners are different specifically in the lower fasteners have a lot of thread sealer on them. The upper fasteners don't. Um, like I said, this is to prevent the oil from leaking out through the threads on the bottom portion of the transmission. When you install our adapter plate, you're gonna put thread locker on all of the fasteners, not just the lower pieces. You just take your thumb and forefinger and just kind of separate this from the top here and it just pops right out. Just like that. Wow. Completely different bearing here. This has been revised. They still have the reliefs for the uh, shifter rods to kind of articulate fully right here and here. Just a little bit revised casting. I'm not sure why that feature is there on the other side, but that's not there. That wasn't there before. This might be a little bit uh, of a new part right here, but the majority of the rest of this is all the same as before. This cut in right here is new, but the majority of this is, is very identical to the previous iteration. All right, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this surface right here. You wanna just take a basic brake parts cleaner and very liberally kind of spray off the mating surface right here, get all the oil. And now we got it going pretty good. It's gonna get all that shipping fluid out and still be safe enough where it doesn't fall off the table. It's gonna drip for a little bit here. So we're gonna go ahead and clean out some of this thread locker that's residually in there with the M8 by one, two, five bottoming tap. We're gonna use our SST tap holder right here to go to a ratchet. A little extension. Good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and measure the input shaft bearing. I believe they went a little bit larger with this system, just like our legacy systems here. The 32010-CD00A had a 100 millimeter input shaft bearing, and that's a very strong trans. This also has a 100 millimeter input shaft bearing size diameter as well, within a couple thou. It's really close. And then the counter shaft bearing is gonna be 62 millimeter right there. Like I said, this fits all of our adapter plates that we've made. We've made accommodations for that. Something to note, do not bump any of these shafts here or here while you're servicing or installing the adapter plate. If you do, you need to get the, the shaft to pop back out or you won't be able to shift the shifter selector shift shaft in the back. It won't be able to properly articulate side to side. So be careful not to bump this one or this one. They also ground down the end of this shifter shaft quite significantly, where in neutral, it sits flush with this mating surface right here. We're gonna go ahead and break parts clean and wipe down this surface one more time to kind of install the adapter plate. We're gonna show you guys how to put the FIPG from Toyota. We're gonna to use Toyota sealant along this surface right here. And then we're gonna install the adapter plate, torque it down, and then this should be ready to palletize and ship out to the customer. We're gonna install the U1 bell housing adapter. This is the A340 U1 bell housing adapter. And like I said before, we're gonna clean off any mating surface with brake parts cleaner, just by spraying a small amount right there and kind of wiping it down. It's really hard to see because of the quality of our machining, but it's, it's very, very well prepped. Moving on, the fasteners here, an M8 by 1.25 flathead cap screw. And these are 60 millimeter long. And this is also M8 by 1.25, 30 millimeter long fasteners. The T56 slave cylinder fasteners are quarter 20, and those are 0.875 or 7 eighths long. And then these are metric um, M10 by 1.5 hexed flange head fasteners, 30 millimeter long. These are M12 by 1.75, 35 millimeter long. And that concludes the bolt kit for the A340 U1 adapter plate that we have. And again, that's for the 1UZ, 2UZ, 3UZ bell housings from 1991 all the way to 2004. This does not work with the 2UZ U2 bell housing, and it does not work with the 05 to 2006 
three UZ six speed bell housing. That's a completely different bell housing adapter. We do have those in stock, but that's just not this adapter here. The torque you're gonna use is 13 foot pounds on these M8 by 1.25 fasteners in a star pattern, alternating adjacent until it's fully torqued down. We have all the tools here. We have our torque wrench set to 13 foot pounds, where you're gonna use a number five Allen head socket system here for all of these flat head cap screws. This is a 15 millimeter for the M10 by one and a half, and this is a 16 millimeter for the M12 by 1.75s. And then we have lastly the 3 8 runs a, I'm sorry, the quarter 20 runs a 3 8 socket as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply Loctite Red 272 to the threads. We're gonna make sure that these threads don't go anywhere after torquing. We wanna put quite a bit on here. I'll show you guys how to get it so that the thread locker is evenly distributed. And we're using Toyota FIPG seal packing 103s. Seems to be the best for what we're trying to achieve. All right, so that's done. Moving on to the arts and crafts portion of the install, we're going to use our Toyota FIPG seal packing 103 to lay a quick bead along the perimeter around each fastener hole all the way done. And then we're going to do some little finger painting to kind of uh, get it all dialed in here. That's more than enough to get it done. And then you just kind of accurately paint it on like this, very evenly paint it on. Now we're kind of done with that. We want to make sure the holes kind of come through. Uh, not super important that obviously the fastener will go through and, and coat it, but I want to clean up any excess you can. This is where having extra gloves really helps out. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install the adapter plate onto the transmission. The technique I like to use, I like to take the fasteners in my left hand, get the majority of them here, put the socket in my pocket, get the adapter plate in the other hand. You're going to use two fasteners here to kind of Align it as you're pushing it in. I'm gonna put one there, and typically put one up here. And then as you're pushing it in, you just basically very carefully slide it onto the input shaft. And then you're gonna rotate it so the threads kind of hit. Right there, you're gonna get a little bit of resistance right where the input shaft seal is right there, and then it fully centers itself up on that input shaft bearing, perfectly aligning the adapter plate with the transmission and the input shaft. Now we can go ahead and thread these in by hand. However, you want to kind of work quickly because the uh, anaerobic seal at the Loctite starts to kind of harden as it's deprived of oxygen. So we're just going to quickly pull these in and then hand tighten these real quick to then move on to torquing them down with a torque wrench. So 13 foot pounds. Again, we're using a number five Allen head. This is torquing this down in a star pattern, alternating and adjacent. Okay, guys, next up is installing the clutch line onto the slave cylinder. You wanna do this before you install the bell housing because you can't really get the whole assembly on and torque or tighten down the clutch line itself without hurting the seal. There's a seal inside here. It's a contact-based seal, donut type of seal, and it will leak if you try to tighten this on inside the vehicle. So we like to do it uh, outside of the vehicle like this. And we're gonna go ahead and take our quarter 20 fasteners, make sure this is nice and seated in there. And to tighten the clutch line on, we have a half inch wrench and a 7 16 You wanna hold the fitting still and tighten on the line accordingly. We're gonna go ahead and tighten on the slave cylinder to the actual adapter plate. That's gonna use a 3 8 socket onto these two fasteners here. And we've got this kind of tidied up and popped off for I don't know why. Well, now we're gonna move on to tightening up the clutch line using a half inch, 7 16 Be sure not to move this fitting inside of this housing or it'll break the seal. And then, like I said, you wanna make sure that the this part, the fitting, does not spin inside the housing. So, we're gonna tighten from the clutch line side here. Slave cylinder installed, adapter plate properly installed, and we're ready to palletize this up. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to email us at brettwcollins at gmail.com or hit the website contact for details for more information. We're going to put a link in the bio to the A340 U1 system. This is a complete uh, install system. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and palletize it up and put it into the uh, OEM Nissan box we have. Uh, most of that already kind of started. This is basically ready to go and 
Like I said, my name is Brett Collins. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section. Like and subscribe for more info. Start cart. Man, this thing's rad. V12. How cool is that? I'm excited.